On Thursday, a large humpback was spotted offshore in the northwest uh, corner of Stellwag and Meek. On uh, Friday, it was resighted uh, pretty close offshore, about nine miles offshore of Chatham. Yesterday morning, around 10 o'clock, it was it washed onto the banks right out here on a sandbar, um, just a, less than a mile offshore here. Part of our stranding agreement with the National Marine Fisheries Service is that we respond to every live and dead marine mammal that washes up on the beach. So not just responding to things that are alive and trying to rescue them, but also responding to the dead animals and doing thorough um, necropsies and collecting data on them um, so that we can find out more about the animals that we work with that come in here on the beach. It's hard to study these animals in the wild. If the animal does wash up on the beach dead, this is a great opportunity to learn a lot from these animals. It's a juvenile male humpback whale. We think it's probably a little bit more over 30 feet. Probably about four tons, so about 8,000 pounds or so is um, what we're giving as our best estimate. So we wanna do a very thorough documentation externally before we even look at the animal internally and see if there's any marks from ship strikes or from entanglements or any signs of disease or lesions. There were definitely a few shark, what we think, believe are shark bites. Dead whales floating offshore do attract a lot of sharks, um, anything from blue sharks to great whites, definitely not the cause of death. It's usually post-mortem. We started here today at about 6.30 this morning. That's a really big production, a lot of equipment, a lot of gear, and a lot of people, and a lot of time. We had to get large equipment to help pull the animal apart and to tow it up the beach farther so we can work on it. We've got some folks uh, that are grad students at Hui. Uh, we also have some staff members from the Provincetown Center for Coastal Studies who do a lot of research on the live humpbacks um, out off Still Wagon and around these waters. We work pretty closely, closely with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, and there's multiple researchers here from there that might that are taking different samples for different projects that they're working on. We have, you know, retired teachers and other wonderful people that come and help us out. Um, that just really enjoy helping on their on their days off. It's actually a lot of hard work to take apart a whale. It takes a lot of muscle and you get pretty tired. It, they have very thick blubber and muscle layer, we so we have to cut through all that, take the ribs apart, and get into all the organs. We try to rotate through and get each staff person um, rotated around to each of the different jobs, so I guess it was my turn to be the really dirty person cutting up the whale. We try to divide it up so you kind of have somebody working on the head section, somebody on the mid section, somebody near the tail area, and so there aren't too many knives hitting each other. And um, one of the biggest dangers about this is you're on kind of slippery footing to begin with, and then you enter enter these you know two foot long knives that everybody's cutting with. So trying to keep the knives apart from one another um, so you don't accidentally cut your neighbor uh, is one of the most important things to remember when doing a large whale necropsy. Well, we want to um, open it up and look at all the organs and take samples from all the organs to try to determine how the animal died, as well as collect samples for things like biotoxins and contaminants. So we can try to get some baseline data, data on the animals that are here in the area to see if they have certain levels of chemicals or toxins um, in their body so that we can um, know for future animals that come in if that's normal or not normal. All of our sort of the general data, what we call level A data, it's like the, um, the measurements of the animal, the sex of the animal, the weight of the animal, what we thought the main cause of death was. That information goes into a um, to National Marine Fisheries Service. Many people can have access to it and we can sort of get a bigger picture overall um, throughout the whole nation of what's going on with marine mammals at Strand um, in the United States. We're able to get you know, a lot of good information, a lot of good samples. We try to, you know, get as much out of the animal since it did wash up on our beach as we can. The skeleton is going to Tom French who works for uh, the state of Massachusetts and he'll put it in a big yard, let um, sort of nature take its place and let it decompose and then he'll give that to a museum or school that might want to re-articulate the skeleton and then hang it somewhere where they can display the animal. So we try to make as much use of all the samples and stuff that we get a, we get a chance to. You know, the smell actually doesn't bother me that much. I don't know. No. I guess you get used to it. I actually love it when you walk into a museum and it smells like whale skeleton. I just love that smell. This is a little fresher, but. <laughs> now we're burying it in a large hole, um, all the soft tissue parts that's left over, in a large hole above the high tide line. 
it'll take at least a year probably, but it'll decompose and um, it's a deep enough hole and far enough offshore that it won't come back up. When we leave here, you'll hardly know that the animal is here. <laughs>